Morning everyone, it's uh, nearly 8.30 in the morning. Yes, it's very early for me, but I went to bed a lot earlier as well. So, and as you can see, weather-wise, we've got thick fog and a very hard frost. So, freezing fog early in the morning when everyone's going to work. Joy! I, uh, I wouldn't want to be driving in it, not unless I had to. I suppose to earn money, you don't have a lot of choice, do you? I just hope uh, people are careful. Anyway, I'm actually up early for a reason. Cats Custom Trikes is going to be here later. Maybe. She may not because of the weather. I'm going to guess it depends if the fog clears or not, because it's quite thick. And if it's that thick in a built-up area, it's going to be what we refer to as pea soup out in the countryside oh. uh, I might drop her a message on Facebook in a bit um, so the plan for today is to as soon as I've done filming this segment I'm going to go and get something to eat and drink and whatnot. Don't even think about it, shithead. <laughs> um, then I've got to go and pick something up that I've bought, which is across town. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> across town, in this icy weather, it, it might have cleared by then. I don't know about the ice. And the frost because we've got a bit of a cold snap not as bad as what they've got in America at the minute but still bad enough I don't envy those in America apparently they've got uh, a cold snap so bad they're warning people to stay inside <clears throat> uh, which I have known to happen in the past <sighs> we really do have some messed up weather at the minute don't we It's just, to me, the weather doesn't have no rhyme or reason to it. It just seems so random, regardless of what time of year it is. And where it is in the world, actually. It just seems so random. Anyway, I don't want this part of the video to run on for too long. So, I want to do the walk around the charity shops as well. I don't know if I'm going to find anything because of the weather, but I've got a feeling it's going to be fairly quiet in town. I mean, I can't even see the church tower. It's just disappeared. I can actually barely see the trees that are in front. I can just see a silhouette of a tree. So I would say visibility is under 100 metres, which according to UK road law means you should have your fog lights on. Right. Anyway, I'll give you a quick little story. Um, before it disappear because uh, I needed to fix one of my radios because I actually thought it was working fine but turns out it wasn't it had no rewind no fast forward but I had perfect playback in fact it sounded great on playback and that was uh, my boombox here that I got with a job lot of radios I randomly purchased on eBay uh, and I found it out because I wanted to listen to a tape actually I was going to sit in here and uh, sort of chill on the bed with a tape playing, but no rewind, no fast forward. So I thought, right, I'll take that to Mum's Sunday and I'll have a look at it. Because I thought, both decks, plays fine, probably a belt. It's probably got a separate belt that drives the um, fast forward and rewind mechanism. So I get it to Mum's the next day which was Sunday, just gone, and I open it all up, and it was really easy, I didn't have to take any of the knobs off the top, it's just four screws in the back, I think, or was it six, it could have been six, yeah, because there's a couple in the battery compartment, um, you reject both tape decks, and the front just lifts off easy as pie. And there's just two wires that plug in for the speakers and microphone. You just unplug those. 
and the whole front lifts away and out of the way so you can work on the whole unit itself. And then, staring you right in the face, is the tape deck, which is held in with five screws. I think it was five. Yeah, it was. There's three at the bottom, two at the top. Um, and that just lifts out. And then there's, well, I didn't realise at the time, but three of the wires unplug. You the wire from the motor unplug and the wires to the tape deck for the playback heads and whatnot all unplug. But I didn't realise at first that the motor did actually unplug. But, uh, and that actually caused me to break the wires off the motor, so I had to go and fix that with my stepdad's on regard. Which did irritate me a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I flipped the tape deck over. Although, before you actually get the tape deck out, the only thing in the way is the scale for the tuner. But that just gently lifts up at this end and rotates around like a little door. Which I actually thought was a good design on that. But, anyway, moving on. It was, in fact, two belts. One on either deck. One of them, I can't remember which one now, but one had a really gooey, horrible belt. It had just totally gone. Um... And the other one had no belt whatsoever, it was just non-existent. So once I'd found a couple of belts that had not too much torque, you don't want too much tension on them. Otherwise things won't spin. And I did that with the first one, so I had to change it. But I've got a couple of belts in there. And I thought, before I put it all back together, I'll just plug the wires in and see if it works. Nothing, it was dead. I was like, what the hell? I haven't broken anything, I checked everything, I haven't broken any wires off or anything, and I couldn't figure it out. So by this time, with that combined with the wires breaking off and me having to fix it and whatnot, and sort of taking it apart to get the belts on a couple of times because I messed up, I was getting a bit irritated, so I just left it to one side, went back Monday, after, you know, sort of chilling out and actually thinking on it. <laughs> You daft can. And uh, I thought to myself, maybe it's not working because it's got to be in the radio itself. You know, maybe there's like a little sensor switch or something that it activates and lets the rest of the radio know that it's in place and okay to power it up. <laughs> so I went back the following month, or the Monday after, you know, after the Sunday, obviously. I don't know why I said that, because Monday's only come after Sunday, but anyway. <laughs> um, and I did. I got everything set back up on the dining room table and uh, looked straight on the circuit board underneath where the tape deck goes in, and there was a leaf switch in there, which is basically two metal, two tiny little metal sheets, I suppose. I don't know what best to call them. And they just literally do that. Tape deck out tape deck in they make connection so put the tape deck in just loosely I didn't screw it in just press the buttons to make sure I had all the functions and I did and uh, I put tape on it after screwing it down I put tape on it just to make sure it works with the tape in it and it did so I put everything back together and it works apart from one thing during fitting the belts a spring popped out of this one out of this deck and at first I was like, oh god, where the heck does that go? And I thought, I really can't be bothered to mess around trying to figure out where a tiny little spring goes. But it's just for the pause button. This pause button locks down, you see. That one doesn't. <laughs> that is something I can live with, with that. You know, I don't use the pause buttons anyway. And I very much doubt they would get used a great deal these days anyway. But anyway, that led me to check my three um, smaller ones. The mono speaker, I don't know what you'd call them, because that's a portable radio, that's a portable radio. <laughs> that's just basically a single deck version, single speaker version of one of these really, isn't it? Like a mini boombox. Anyway, this one, at first, I didn't think I had rewind or fast forward. Because I put a tape in there and it wouldn't do either, it would just play. So... <laughs> But it actually turns out it didn't like the tape I was putting in it. It just I put in a different tape and it started rewinding and fast forwarding perfectly after I'd taken it apart. <laughs> so it seems like it doesn't like the tape. I've still got that one to look at. That doesn't have rewind or fast forward. Most likely a belt issue. 
again common issue when you get radios this old and tape decks as old as they are now the belts just to go but that's all they need usually just new belts but I've got this Avenger on the floor here that um, had rewind had playback but no fast forward and it just seems that once I take this apart as well which is just a matter of five screws on the back here it just seems like it was um, just a bit of a sticky fast forward mechanism because I just took it apart and kept switching between fast forward and rewind and whatnot and uh, it started working so this is quite a simple little unit really and no, it's not it just looks plain to me it doesn't look like it's going to yell at me to buy it you know if that was still new in the store but Oh, it's got a built-in condenser mic as well. But this one, I don't think, don't think my other two have got it, but this one's got a built-in mic with a remote, ear, in out, and a monitor switch. And I can't remember what the monitor switch does. Will you bugger off, you? <sighs> I don't know what you want. We'll go do that. I might shut the camera down. Go and get something to eat and whatnot. I don't really want to go and get something to eat. Open that, but. I don't have anything in the cupboard at the minute, so I don't have a choice. Oh. Do you know, Nemo, I'm sure you had some left in a tin. Don't tell me. Well, bollocks. While I'm out, I'm going to have to grab some cat food, it seems. I swear I only opened that tin yesterday. I did use it because I can see the, kit, the tin in the top of the <clears throat> recycle bin. Sorry Nemo, I'm going to have to go and get you something to eat when I go get something to eat. <laughs> On account of, neither of us have anything to eat. I swear. I'm so sh sure. But there's the tin. Right there. I was so sure that I actually had some left. Oh well. I'm sure you can wait a little bit longer. Especially if I've got to wait a little bit longer. Anyway, enough rambling. I'm going to go and get all this uh, bits and bobs done. So I will be back in a little while. We're back. It's uh, 7.30. Cat's Custom Trikes went hours ago. Before it got dark. She doesn't like biking back when, it, when it's dark. Especially when the weather has been as it has been. So uh, I did take a little walk around town. Um, she didn't bring a PC because of the weather, so I gave her a video card and I hope that fixes the problem. If not, it's a bit more of an in-depth problem than just as simple as uh, replacing a video card or fitting one. Anyway, the only thing I managed to find in charity shops today, there is one item but I don't know where I put it, <laughs> is um, die-cast cars. I've got quite a number of them. So, I'm going to have to sit up a bit thing for this. Yeah, I've got all of these, two different charity shops, some manky old matchboxes. I might actually go back there tomorrow and see if they've got any more in the in their basket. But uh, there's a lot here of these matchbox ones that I bought. These ones, these matchbox ones, and that one. Uh, that one, that one, that, 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 they all came from one charity shop, so all of these from that Opal Diplomat and around came from, oh, and that one, this lot, Ugh. oh, and that one, so basically, yeah, that half over there came from one charity shop, this half came from another, and there's a lot of um, repainted ones in here that someone's done themselves, so, uh, there is reasoning to why I bought some of these. This one, I'm not sure if I'll put up for a restoration or not, or use it as a parts car for the same type. Because I actually do like the shape of this car. It's a nice little car. It's a Volkswagen, I believe. Not got enough light, but it's got a pillar missing and half the window missing. Well, probably about a quarter of the window missing. So, it would need new windows. The pillar's not a problem. That can actually be patched in. 
Well, both of them would be, although we could try and bend this pillar, this side, back into position and try and just stick it back. Do you reckon from that silver bit on the front there, they were trying to make it look like, you know, it had some um, body filler done on it, some body work? So yeah, I'm not sure what we're going to do with that one yet. That one is just going to go into my little uh, die-cast scrapyard diorama that I'm going to make up to something simple and ridiculous, basically. That one will probably go in there temporarily till I decide what to do with it. Because I do like this truck. And I wouldn't mind doing a custom paint job on it, but it's got a hole in the windshield, so I'm going to have to find a another tatty truck. This one... I think this is my third one. I think it's this Matchbox car I've got three of. Um, actually, I'm pretty certain it is. Someone's painted this one. Sort of a military colour thing at the front there. I'm not sure what's going on in the centre there. It looks good, though. I actually like it. <laughs> I actually do like the paint job. It's just a shame they did it probably by hand, actually, with a paintbrush. And they haven't stripped the old paint off. You can see it coming through there, the old red. So what I might do, as I've got three, I'll get one restored back to originality. And one, perhaps customised like this. Custom paint job. Maybe not with that. I might actually just leave this one as it is, like I said. Because, I do, oddly, I do like this weird front end. Uh, what else have we got? We've got a nice van there, so that doesn't need any work. Other truck here for the scrapyard. It's got half the front missing. Another car there. Could be saved, but again, it wouldn't be easy because of the shape of these door pillars. And both of them have actually been bent and snapped anyway. This one will go for a resto. I like whoever had this. They've actually repainted the wheels because they're nice and shiny. The paint job wouldn't have actually been too bad if it wasn't for the green on the window there and on the back window. I even painted the um, fuel filler cap there, look. Taillights they painted in. So what I'm going to get my dad, my dad, my stepdad rather, to do is uh, obviously strip this all back and restore because I've got another one of these. So I'll get him to do one original and I'll have this one probably in this shade of green. Or as close to this as possible. I'm not a perfectionist. Because um, I do like these cars. It's a um, MG1100. And I've got this. Again, someone's painted it. And I painted red on the back for the tail lights. This was red originally. Because I can see that coming through on the edge there. What is it? It's a Simca. Ah. That's what they were referring to. The Majorette Simca. And got a nice large Corgi Castrol car thing, got a Majorette Caravan. Again, someone's done a custom job on the roof. I think. Pretty certain, yeah. They've painted the tail lights on the back. And repaired the tow hitch. And we've got a couple of um Teamsters Land Rovers. Someone did manage to ID those for me. It looks like they came in like a bigger box with like a um, horse box thing on the back. Which wasn't there, which doesn't bother me really. Um, what else have we got? We've got a fire van, another fire van with floodlights on the roof. Police car. Got golf over the back there, Hot Wheels fire engine. Vitara I think that might be. Something like that. It's one of those matchbox shiny bases that you can't bloody read. Ford Mustang. It hasn't got the maker underneath, but I've got a feeling that could be a Teamsters as well. Or similar sort of brand. A nice uh, Majorette lorry. It's actually in very good condition, this one. Grey integrated. Wells Points. 79s Wells. Hmm. One of us one that they had specially made from Majorette. Majorette Land Rover. With the rear door missing. Hot Wheels Corvette. That's about it. No, it isn't. I've got another one of these. Now, believe it or not, this only cost me a quid. That was quite a steal. So I've now got those two there. If I bring this into the frame, can you see there's actually a colour difference? And it's not the light. 
if I lay that on there so it's in the same sort of light you can see that the shades of yellow differ between each vehicle I was actually watching a guy who uh, restores, ma restores matchbox cars and he pointed that out as well he had like three or four of the same model from this from matchbox in the same colors but when you put them side by side you can see slight variations in the shade um, and he basically pointed that out because you know he said you shouldn't be so antsy about color matching because even with real the real McCoys you know it's not an exact match he said it probably depends on who mixed the paint that day <laughs> which is absolutely right anyway I also now own and it is actually in far better condition than my old one to be honest a Sega Mega Drive Mark 1 <laughs> and he had it all set up when I got there so I saw it working obviously the game wasn't included um, he sold it because he just bought one that was boxed because he's a bit of a collector of these consoles and um, <laughs> if I said I wasn't jealous of both the bedrooms that he had set up I'd be lying you know <laughs> it's brilliant I swear he had at least two PCs set up in one room, one set up in another room, his son was in his room <laughs> um, actually I think it's his grandson, not his son dumbass I think I've got both of them on Facebook as well anyway yeah, he, um, he's got consoles galore including the new mini versions of consoles old consoles you know like this uh, Mega Drive he said that's the reason he was selling that because he bought a boxed version he prefers to have the boxed versions to the unboxed or at least one of each for some of them and yeah it came with everything there's the um, RF cable the power brick and uh, a good controller he put it up for 25 but he, when I got there he said to you 20 quid because there's a few scratches and marks on it that he noticed so that's not bad and then I did go in a disc in that and uh, he didn't have a lot in the way of Mega Drive games there was a number of sports games but I don't like sports games and then um, Cat's Custom Trikes actually found this which I'd overlooked so I got Sonic the Hedgehog for five pound and to be honest if I was to get that on eBay that's roughly what I would pay for an unboxed game anyway so I want to set that up later <laughs> and have a tidy up in the bedroom or at least make some space down there in this uh, general area and uh, connect it all up to that and hope it all works through my TV. I've got to remember where the TV remote is. <laughs> I haven't seen it. It should be in this general vicinity somewhere. But then again, I've lost the remote to that candle as well. Again, it should be in that general area somewhere. Ooh. I know the Mega Drive worked. Like I said, it was all set up and working when I got there. But, uh, it was an awesome collection of stuff he had. Not the biggest. There's people all bigger. You know, same with my Lego. There's people with a lot more Lego out there than what I've got. But uh, still, it was an awesome collection. I mean, it's just. I think my jaw might hit the floor actually. And oh, I've got some Lego as well. Couldn't resist. So I actually got four sets, but I've only got three sets here, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> I've got the police car, I've got that. I bought two of these. 
Now, what this should look like as the actual set, which I bought last year, should look something like this, but without the black hubs in the wheel. I'll put those on there because I like it better. Should have white hubs. But yeah, that's what the set should look like with all the stickers on, all the rally stickers on, because it's based on the Ford Fiesta WRC rally car. And uh, the set is currently on offer in Sainsbury's. At least it was on offer in my local Sainsbury's. £13, which is the going price for a single Speed Champions Lego car like this. They all go for £13, the single ones. Or two for £15. So what I went and done, I went and bought two for £15 and made a blue one instead of a blue and white one. Um, changed a few things to black, like the rear bumper. And the front bump, I've got two bits there that I want to change to black. And a couple of other bits I'm going to change to black as well, may maybe. And I left the stickers off. Well, the only stickers I used were the ones for the headlights and the ones for the taillights. And the Ford badge, that was it. I left all the other stickers off because that's what I've been wanting to do for months. Just make a civilian version of it, if you like. That looks a bit more like a boy racer car rather than a rally car with all the stickers and whatnot on. Funny taste down there, and I don't know what it was. I thought it was blood at first. And if you're wondering why you could see all these sort of lip and cheek movements, that's why. Why must I don't get? I've actually got enough bits to build another one of these, just not with the blue arches. They're all in white, but I haven't got any of the other pieces in the colours that I would need to make it white. <laughs> Dunno, I'll have a play with that later. Right. Is there anything else I want to mention? I think when I go down in a bit to go to Lidl's I'll have to take that recycled bin with me because it's rather full. Nemo, I believe, is on the bed with the hump. Because he was in my way and I had to move him so he's now got the hump with me. Um, so I've got, got two reviews to do for the LEGO channel now. I'm only going to pick one to do at the minute. And there. Uh, I think it's going to be the Harvester Transport. That's got to be done. If I do that tonight, I could even edit it, edit it tonight. Edit that, that, that. I've got one more item to post. I've just posted two items that sold. I sold those stereo speakers that I took out of an old radio. And what the heck was it? Oh, brake levers for a road bike that I took off that yellow road bike. So I think, all in all, that's made me about £10. <laughs> Not a great deal. I know I've got to post another two items because they have been paid. Although it says four items need to be posted and I marked two of them as posted so have the others been... Oh, they've all been paid for. All right then. I'll have to. Uh, might have to sling a bit across. I've got one rear derailleur, a couple of seat posts.
both seat posts and all my I put a job lot of um, vintage brake levers up mountain bike brake levers because I kept the ones that I wanted in pairs and these were just pairs that I didn't need so many of so I just put them up as a job lot 99p start bid and they sold for £5.50p I took a couple of um, random seat posts I think I took three in total out of my box of seat posts and put those up at £2 each two of those have sold is that rear derailleur put that up for two quid that sold I've just I've collected up so many bike parts and part of me and this is the bit that is hard to bloody ignore probably my hoarder side actually said no don't get rid of that it could be useful you might need it for a bike you might need it you know oh. to be honest that actually drives myself nuts because I'm like I haven't used it <laughs> in ages haven't used it don't plan to use it why do I need it you know it's just literally stuff that I've collected up for years that I'm just I'm going through and getting rid of. Need to go to Mum's tomorrow because I've got an eye appointment. Um, not at Mum's. I've got one at Crumma Hospital actually, um, and it's a diabetic eye checkup. So it's not like you normal go to the optician check up and they put. I don't know if they actually still do it, but they used to put you know them weird glasses on you and change all the lenses and whatnot. Probably not now. It's probably all you know electronic and technological and whatnot. Now this one it's a special one specifically for diabetes to check for diabetic related con eye conditions and what they do they stick a few eye drops in each eye which it does sting for about 10 seconds it's and that's like getting a little bit of soap in your eye and you just give it a wash out that's gone you just sit there for 10 seconds and poof gone then you'll get told to sit for about a quarter of an hour something like that while the um, drops do their thing and what they do they dilate your pupils um, so they make them really go wide so it looks like you're on speed for the rest of the day pretty much um, so um, yeah and then once it's kicked in and started working they call you back and uh, you put your head on my chin on a machine like that and they just bring the rest in tell you to stare at a little white dot with whichever eye they're taking a picture of and they take a picture of the inside of your eye and uh, the guy or the lady you know whoever's doing it will uh, give the photos a quick glance to see if they can actually see anything but uh and then send you like a letter in the mail a week or so later confirming if they found anything or if you're clear so nothing major it's just it can take hours to wear off I can't remember how long it took to wear off last time I swear that was about five hours and I couldn't read anything on the computer Looking at an object, like the camera, or the keyboard, or something like that, I could see fine. Trying to focus my eyes on written stuff on a screen, or on a bit of paper or something, impossible. I should have filled myself, because I sat here last time, reading everything on screen with a bloody magnifying glass. I think it was this one, actually. You know, I'm like this. You know... <laughs> <laughs> going over everything because my eyes weren't focused so I had to sort of substitute that I suppose with a magnifying glass because I can adjust that and adjust the focus technically so got a feeling I actually think what I might do tomorrow is just stay off the laptop until I can read I'm going to be down at mum's so Um, I think what I'll do, I'll go back out to my shed at Mum's and uh, see if there's any other half-decent seat posts in there that I can drag out of the box. Maybe some half-decent handlebar stems. Actually, I've got one. I've got one off that racer. <laughs> but at the same time, I do actually want to keep that because I do switch them on my own mountain bikes. 
Uh, and if that's actually looking better than the ones I've got on my mountain bikes at the minute, then I'll probably uh, swap it. If not, I'll sell it later on. But I'll have a dig around and see what I've got. I do lack tyres, though. Well, I don't. I've got plenty of tyres. But a lot of them, the sidewalls are either cracked beyond safe use or... As Cat's Custom Trikes found when I pulled one out of the shed for it, it's got a big hole in the side of it. <laughs> I didn't even notice. I just saw, at first glance, I just saw that, you know, the tread was good. The sidewalls looked good at first glance. And the tread was good, so it went in the pile of good tyres. When really, it's a useless piece of crap, you know. No use whatsoever. I've got some um, spare instruction manuals for this now. I don't know if it's worth putting those on eBay. I've seen people sell instruction manuals on eBay, but I don't know if some, you know, ones for something like this would be of any use. Do I have to relist anything? Uh, now that I think about it. Because, uh, There's a few things here that had watches, but no one bid. Right, I'm going to relist them, and I'm going to put the um, automatic relist option on. At least eBay's working tonight. It wasn't working last night. Not at Mum's, anyway. I don't know if that was her net or what it was. Don't think so. That's actually worrying because nothing's nothing has come up in the description box. I'm gonna list it, then I'm gonna go and check it. Before I relist another one. No, there is nothing there. Well, that is bloody weird. Let's 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 go and have a look at another one. It's a um, retro BMX stem, handlebar stem. It's in bloody good condition. I can't remember where I got it from. Got it unsold again. Uh, Relist this seat post. I'm just surprised that one didn't sell. Scroll down. That's got it, so I've only got one to revise with a description. Maybe that's why it didn't sell. <laughs> I'm sure I wrote a description out for that one, though. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Automatically relist I this item up to eight times if it doesn't sell. So it just saves you having to go back in and do this. Uh, realist another I think there's only one more yeah I've got some Dell items on here Dell PC items but I'm not sure I'm gonna relist those yet I might try again at a later date automatically relist there we go third item done I'm actually hoping that because I went or well, I was up at 7:30 this morning Mainly because my tummy needed to go to the loo, or rather my, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, that and I had to be up early anyway because I had Cat's Custom Trikes coming up and I wanted to do a few things before she got here. Um, yeah, um, I'm hoping I can go to bed early tonight and actually get somewhat of, um, a decent sleeping pattern, you know, going to bed at a decent hour. I used to go to bed at like two o'clock. I don't know what happened there. It seems to be a lot later. So I've got a radio for spares repairs here that's uh, got one watcher. Some bike parts not getting a lot of views. Maybe I should actually lower the price and put it on as an auction because I think that's what I did for the others. Yeah. 
how long is how long has that got left? A day and sixty hours. Right. Well, what I'll do then. Oh, the BMX brakes have got two hours left. Right. What I'll do then is let them run their course. When I relist them, I'll change it so it's an auction. And I think I five day auction is what I put them up for. All right. Right. No more rambling, I'm going to get this video edited up. If I've forgotten something, tough shit, I'll have to mention it in another video. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, thanks a lot for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.